Good day, this is Jim Pytel from Columbia Gorge Community College. This is Digital Electronics One. This lecture is entitled Counters, Displays, and Decoders. The purpose of this lecture is really to just kind of prepare you for some of the stuff that I'm going to be asking you to do in the lab. One of the first things we're going to be dealing with is uh, we've got to have some usable form of data. And one of the most usable forms of data uh, for decoding is what's known as a seven segment display. It's a visual indicator of numbers zero through nine. I like this because it's not in English. You're going to have to learn how to uh, use some of these devices. Say, for example, you're working with Mitsubishi, you're going to get a guarantee you're going to do a schematic in Japanese. What is a seven segment display? It's got seven segments named A. B, C, D, E, F, and G. And again, just do that is A, B, C, D, E, F. We're going, starting at the top, going around clockwise. When you run out of A, B, C, D, E, F, go back to the middle, it's G. Any number zero through nine can be represented by lighting up those segments. Zero, A, B, C, D, E, F. One, B and C. Two, A, B, G, E, D. I'm going to leave the examples for you. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Figure out which segments for these numbers. The question is, what does it take to light up a segment? It depends. There are common anode displays and common cathode displays. Common anode means that there are seven LEDs all tied together with a common anode. Dig it? So there's a simplified version of a seven segment display where they're all seven segments have the same plus five anode. That's segment A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Say I want to light up segments B and C to appropriately light up the letter, or it's going to be the number one. So it's a common anode, i.e. everybody's got plus five. What will light up segment B and C? Zeros. What will keep A, D, E, and F from lighting? Five volts or ones. Common cathode is different. Common cathode everybody's cathodes are tied together to a, to a zero, to a ground. And you have to supply an active high or a plus five to get those segments to light up. This particular lecture is dealing with the common anode. It's the one we're going to be using most commonly in the lab. This is what's known as active low. And there are a lot of confusing ways to describe active low. You know, you guys have been dealing with a bunch of lectures right now where I'm dealing as a one is a... Uh, an output that is, you know, it's, it's active high, okay? And when I say active low to you, some of you guys' heads are gonna explode. The way to think about active low is just this. It takes a zero to get it to do something. These segments, A through G, on a seven segment display, they are active low. It takes a zero to get them to light up. That's all it is. For example, two, I wanna light up A, B, G, E, and D. Show me what the inputs to the segment, seven segment display should be. So that's A, B, G, E, D. For a common anode display, A should be a zero, B should be a zero, G should be a zero, E should be a zero, D should be a zero. All the other ones should have ones on it. So what I'm telling you is for it to produce the value two, the number two on its display, it's got to have these values on it into its input. And how are you going to do that? You're going to use your logic probe or your DMM or the world's quickest constructed logic probe. This is something cool here. Think about here. I've got two LEDs. Let's call that one red. Let's call that one green. Light emitting diodes. They are one-way check valves for electricity. Let's go ahead and say I take my probe. That's what this arrow is. I put a current control resistor right there in series with a light emitting diode that's red. I take my wire probe that's dangling off to the side. I've got another diode that's green, another current control resistor, and finally I've got ground at the bottom. What happens if I hook my probe up to plus five volts? Which one is forward biased? Which one is reverse biased? Or which one has no bias across it? 
Okay, think about this. Five volts here. Obviously, this one is forward biased. This light lights up green. It's high. My probe is sensing a high. Now, let's say I move my probe wire over to something that's zero volts. Which one is forward bias now? This one. And the red lights up. That's a low. That's a high. So you can easily construct one of these little logic probes here, telling you why am I getting eight on my display? Well, chances are you got zeros on everything. You might have inadvertently shorted everything to zero. There's a such thing as a lamp test, which we'll go over in a little bit here. You might inadvertently be lamp testing this thing. It helps to know how these things work before you use them. Sometimes you're just going to get these labs and they're just going to hand you this unknown device. So I'm trying to do is just give you guys a precursor to this. There's several different manufacturers of seven segment displays. Some They're all dual inline packages, the ones that we've got in lab. Some of them, all the pins are in sequence. Some of them, pins are missing and pushed over there. Count the missing pins as if they're there. Okay, use those data sheets that are provided uh, for the different manufacturers of seven segment displays. When it calls for a common anode display, make sure you get a common anode display, not a, not a common cathode display. Okay, now let's talk about a decoder. Okay, because obviously I want to be able to display a two or a three or whatever. How do we generate this code for a two? that's usable by the seven segment display. What you're gonna use is commonly associated device with a seven segment display. It's called the 7447 BCD two seven segment decoder. Let me go ahead and write that out. So the 7447 BCD two seven segment decoder, sometimes called a driver. What it's doing, it's taking BCD and converting it to a code usable by a 7447. So this is actually one of our first fixed function logic devices that we're actually going to be using here and we'll learn a little bit later how we can create something like this using just combinational logic i.e just ands just nots and ors so what it's doing it's converting that code that bcd code to seven segment language okay what is the bcd code for two zero zero one zero so that's its input and this is its output and as kind of this little schematic is showing us here got our 7447. We've got our A input, B, C, and D input. Some manufacturers might call that 8421 or the BCD code. That's my BCD input. Okay, you're going to have to look at the data sheet as to what the pins are because they are not pins 1, 2, 4, and 8. Actually, there's 7, 1, 2, and 6. So that's the pins. That's the weights. Don't trust me though. Trust the data sheet. It's easy to get confused. So the weights sometimes get used to how, however that manufacturer is putting those inputs. It could be called A0, A1, A2, A3, the one with the highest number, that's the MSB. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in the code for two, zero, zero, one, zero, in the correct order. What's it gonna spit out? It's gonna spit out A, B, C, D, E, F, G, zero, 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 one, one. And my seven to the segment display is going to say two. What are these other things that are hanging out on the side of the 7447? These guys right here. LT. That's what's known as lamp test, as I alluded to previously. Lamp test has a bar over the top of it. What's a bar over the top of something mean? It means normally it's a negation. If you see a bar over something on the input or output of something, it means it's active low. Like I said earlier, it takes a zero to get it to do something. What do you think would happen if I had the lamp test with a bar over it, and if it takes a zero to get it to do something, and I put a zero on it, what do you think the outputs for A through G would be? Well, if a lamp test has got a bar over it, it takes a zero to get it to do something. And if I give it a zero, it's going to do something. It's going to test the lamps. All the segments are going to come on, and it's going to look like the number eight. And if I take lamp test and I give it a logical one or a plus five volts, what is it going to do? It's going to take this input there. So there's several doors of inputs there. And then we should be back to our display of two. Okay, so that's all I'm trying to illustrate is there are several inputs there. And the lamp test, by the way, overrides 
what's going to be on the D, C, B, and A, or the 8421 inputs. A quick note about these two other pins here, uh, blanking input, uh, ripple blanking input, ripple blank output. These, don't worry about it for right now, because we're just going to be doing uh, with single seven segment displays. These are used in a cascaded arrangement, whereby, example is a digital clock. Say, for example, you wake up at six in the morning, you see six zero 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 or six zero zero you don't see zero six zero zero what's what's called is leading zero suppression basically this one seven segment display it's got the most significant bit this next one that's normally used to display the number one when it reaches like 12 o'clock or something like that it's not being used that's what's known as uh you can set these things up in a cascaded arrangement so you can leading zero suppress. Additionally, say for example, it's exactly 0.5 pounds. Your display doesn't, your uh, your scale doesn't say 0 0.50003, it's trailing zero suppression. So you can set these things up in a cascaded arrangement. Don't worry so much about it right now, but you do need to worry about the fact that if they are active low, the blanking input there, if you are blanking it with a zero, what's your display going to do? It's going to be blank. So you need to go ahead and put that to a plus five if you are not, if you don't want it to be blanked. All right, how do I send the value zero, zero, one, zero, i.e. two MSB, two LSB, to a 7447 display? So you know what I'm doing is I'm doing, here's our output. I'm going all the way back to our input with our decoder in between. How do I send that? Yeah, one could say, okay, I'm gonna put a zero, put a ground on there, a ground on there, plus five on there, and another ground on there. You're gonna to have to come up with a switching arrangement that does that. I've previously alluded to the use of dip switches. Take the current control resistor, one side of the dip switch, put it to ground, plus five, put that to our one input. Okay, so consider, for example, this circuit right here. It's all the same stuff that we've discussed thus far. You got your seven segment display right here, it's interfaced with your 7447 BCD to seven segment decoder. What's in between them? What are these bubbles? First off, well, it's active low, meaning that when you're gonna to try to assert the A output, i.e. light up segment A, there should be a zero there. Okay, so that's active low. What are these little squiggly things that look like resistors in between? The resistors, what they are is current control resistors. So you don't, you're controlling the amount of current going to those individual segments. What's on the left side of the 7447? Those are our inputs, eight, four, two, and one. What am I not showing here? I'm showing not showing a bunch of things right here. I'm obviously not showing the ground connection to the 7447, and I'm not showing the supply VCC plus five to this either. Okay, so these chips need to be powered up. What am I showing on the left-hand side, however? Well, this guy right here, you've seen this before. That's a dual inline package of switches. We're using four out of the eight or the 10 that we're, that are on that particular package. One side's hooked to ground. The other side has pull-up resistors, all hooked to plus five. When the switch is open, what is being sent to those eight, four, eight, two, four, and one pins? When the switch is closed, what is being sent to those eight, four, and two, and one weighted pins? This is basic electronic stuff. You need to know this stuff. For example, I close, well, all right, let's say the number two, I want a zero, a zero, one, zero. What am I going to do? I'm going to close this one, close that one, close this one. I'm going to leave the two position open. Why? Think about from this perspective. 5 volts to ground, conventional current will flow in that resistor, I'm going to call it R1. All voltage drop occurs across the resistor. What is the voltage drop there, or what is the voltage there with reference to ground? It is ground, because it is connected to ground. I'm getting a zero there. Switch 2 is open. No current can flow to ground. If there is no current flowing, there is no IR drop across resistor R2. If there's no voltage drop, five volts minus no voltage drop is five volts. So I'm sending a logical one there. Same thing for four and eight. I am sending zero, zero, one, zero. So it helps to have an understanding of how 
each separate section works because check this out where is the failure going to occur between here and there between here and there very rarely and it does happen will the seven segment display be messed up or the 7447 be this messed up the problems are going to occur the interface between the systems there are also problems at this end do you have the dip switches are you reading a closed versus an open as a one or a zero or a zero or one figure it out you got to know how these things work in advance and how i recommend you guys do this is build this side first build your switching arrangement first put on a zero zero one zero test the interface make sure you're getting out a zero zero one zero and if you are truly putting in a zero zero one zero to the 7447 seven excuse me bcd to seven segment display driver you should be outputting a two right there and not a four what are you predicting here if you're actually outputting a four what's wrong what have you done well you flip-flop the two in the four position that's just one possibility you could just be totally messing it up so it helps to predict these things that is a manual arrangement okay what if i took out this fancy dancy looking little, little switch apparatus on the left hand side and i know it looks pretty in schematics right there do that with some wires and resistors on that tiny proto board and do it with your big old shaking hands okay we'll see how pretty it looks because those manual setups they're limited to how fast we can respond which is not very fast what if i put a counter here that counted from zero to nine and ran it at a slow enough speed with a clock that it ran at one hertz every every one second it changed its value what would i see on this seven segment display and it's again it's counting from zero to nine back to zero obviously you'd see zero up to nine back to zero up to nine back to zero and be going slow enough if you had that clock going super fast you would just see this blur and it would probably look like an eight what i'm saying is, is if this is the thing that you want to build a counter that drives the 7447 that in turn drives a seven segment display you should probably check out to make sure that this thing functions with a manual switching arrangement before you go ahead and hook it up onto something else do you need a seven segment display or the 7447 for this no you you might not even need this if you want this thing to go nuke and fast just go ahead and set this whole thing up with a counter that counts from zero to nine and input that into your digital system going at an extremely fast rate if you want to see what these things look like go ahead by all means put each individual output let's say that is our q3 q2 q1 Q0, our output MSB to LSB, display that on, a, on the oscilloscope. This is what I mentioned earlier in some of the timing analysis diagrams there. You should be able to see it count from state 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, where this is the MSB, that's the LSB, all the way up to 9, 1, 0, 0, 1, and then recycle. That's again as an up counter. What happens if it was set in a down counter? It would go from nine to zero, nine to zero, over and over again, okay? So just a couple quick uh, notes about common lab practices and some of the more commonly used devices we're gonna be doing using in some of these labs. The other thing is to build that switching arrangement. I know you spent a lot of time on it and keep it. You guys are the only ones that are in the lab this year. Go ahead and keep that thing keep it squirreled away in your locker make sure you give it back to me on your proto board but use that thing over and over again okay this about concludes this section of the lecture here we're going to go ahead and do a brief review of what we discussed and then we'll get some practice in lab with this